Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you here today. Hope you all stay awake after your late night watching the Astros win. That was good. Everybody's been telling me about it. I went to bed at 9 o'clock as usual because that's what I do on Saturdays. And I'm just falling asleep at that time. But I'll hear about it for the rest of the week, I'm sure. Hope you'll take a moment and register your attendance, if you will. There are several announcements on your bulletin, if you take a look at that. Uh, this afternoon, or right after church, we have church finance and council meeting uh, at 12 o'clock. Uh, the Youth Reboot, which is a group combined of St. Mary's Episcopal Church and uh, this church, is meeting this afternoon as well. Uh, our first of about six meetings, it seems like, in the next uh, three months. And then uh, this evening, there's table talk with a bishop at 5 o'clock at Holy Covenant United Methodist Church in Katy. If you're looking for something to do, that would be a place to be. I will be there, and also our delegate to annual conference, Paula, uh, will be there as well. And so uh, if you'd like to, to be there, we'd love to see you. The other activities in the life of the church are as listed. Um, Wednesday evening, 6 o'clock dinner, 6.30 Bible study and choir practice. Also, um, make note that next Sunday is, well, next Sunday is All Saints Celebration. We're going to, in, we have invited all of the families who have lost a, a member uh, over the last year. And they'll be here. We will uh, ask them as the names of those persons who have died in the last year are read to light a candle in memory of them. Uh, following the service, we'll have a covered dish luncheon, and they'll be our honored guests at that. And so if you know any of those families and would like to reach out to them, uh, please do so. Their names are listed in the newsletter, which was emailed to you, and there are a few copies left on the desk down in the, the main area. But if you'd like to reach out to them and uh, just let them know that you're thinking about them, it would be a, a good thing. It's part of how we grieve together uh, in the process of worshiping together. Also, if you would be interested in helping serve lunch on Saturday, uh, we're going to serve tacos to the uh, cleanup crew for this community-wide cleanup. Uh, we'll start cooking at 10 a.m. And if you'd like to be here to cut up some tomatoes or other things like that, we'd be glad to have you. Any other announcements that need to be shared? Yes, Miss Ashley? Dessert auction is a fundraiser for the, the children and youth going to camp, basically, uh, and other activities, but mainly it's for camp. And uh, if you'd like to Donate a dessert to be auctioned off. Get with Ashley so that she can get that lined up. Any other announcements? Yes, Pastor Paul. Yes, ma'am. Uh, food pantry. Remember the food pantry. We have lots of hungry folks in this community. Thank you. Let us stand for the call to worship. How beautiful is the word of the Lord. How wise are God's commandments. Through the Lord's precepts we gain understanding. Through God's wisdom we find truth. The Lord is our God. We are God's people. God's word is within us. For it is written on our hearts. Amen.
Please be seated if the children would join Ashley for children's time. in this brown bag special children's <laughs> sermon time. Isn't it so fun? And he's so witty and can keep on his toes and he does such a great job. I think we should do it more than once a year. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well today... I'm thinking somebody's buttering me up because of a sign that appeared on my back last week. <laughs> <laughs> well today my girls brought stuff. So let's see what y'all got. Pull them out. An alien? <laughs> All right, an alien. Some fabric. <laughs> and a spider. It is a fake spider, so we don't have to scream. You are correct. <laughs> so we could use this to dress the alien, right? You think he's scared of a spider? No. They're both scary? What else is in there? There's nothing but a bag other than that. So we have some cloth, and we have a spider, and we have an alien. Hmm. And I have to come up with a Bible story for this, huh? <laughs> So, once the alien was setting down and along came a spider and sat down beside... No, that's not a Bible story. <laughs> that's not a Bible story, is it? Well, I have one for you. In the very beginning, God created everything that is. He created the stars and the moon. He created... He created elephants, he created giraffes, he created all of the plants and the sea and the birds and human beings. And if there are aliens, he created aliens too. He created spiders. He created everything that was. And everything was good except, you know what happened? Everybody didn't have any clothes. But that was okay because they didn't know they didn't have any clothes. But you know what they did? They sinned. The story of how they sinned was they ate an apple off of a tree that they weren't supposed to eat because it was God's and he didn't want them to eat it. But then their eyes were opened and they realized that there was sin. And you know what God did for them? He made them clothes. He didn't make them clothes out of this because this is nice. He made it out of some animal skins and eventually we got the clothes that we wear now but it reminds us that we have to dress up because we have to cover ourselves because of sin that's kind of part of it it's always a reminder that everybody sins no matter what but the good news is that if there are aliens God created them if there there are spiders and God created them too for a very good purpose they eat other bugs that we don't like even more than them and God provides for us these clothes that we wear so that we don't have to live naked all the time. Which I don't know about you, but I'm really glad for that. <laughs> so think about the way that God provides for us and he gives us things. And that wherever we are, whatever we are, where, whatever we're doing, God is always taking care of us. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll go back to our seats. Dear God. Dear God. Help us to remember. Help us to remember that you created everything. That you created everything. Every bird and every animal. Every bird and every animal. All of the stars and all people. All of the stars and all people. And you provide for us. And you provide for us. Help us to live thankfully. Help us to live thankfully. And to live fully for you. And to live fully for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We'll send the bag home with hope this week. <coughs> Thank you. 
As the ushers come forward, we prepare to give to God our gifts, our tithes and offerings, all in response to what God has given to us, all in response to how God loves us. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer you ourselves. We offer you the symbols of our daily work. We offer you our prayers and our thanksgiving. All that we can bring to you, we bring to you. Because you are our God and we are your people. Accept these and use them to do the work of your church in this community and beyond. In Christ we pray. Amen. Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing with the goodness of God. My life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so. Please remain standing and join me in the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, 
the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death and life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. After asking the ushers to be ready for me to make a specific announcement, I didn't make it. We have hearing assistance devices in the uh, ushers' cry room, and they have been reworked and updated. And so if you used one and stopped using it because it was not working uh, and would like to try one today, we would be glad to get you one. If you'll raise your hand, the ushers will bring it to you or you can get one out of the cry room yourself. But the uh, hearing assistance devices uh, are working again, and we'd be glad to have you uh, make use of them today.
come now to our prayer concerns and celebrations, and as we do so, we invite you to celebrate uh, or lift up things that you're concerned about. Yes, ma'am. We'll add Polly Roll to our, our uh, prayer concerns and pray for her as she's ill, saying together, Lord, hear our prayer. Wow. Well, I think that ought to be separate, don't you? Because they're brothers and sisters, and they always have to share, right? <laughs> so, uh, for Hope, and I know there were some others that also had some artwork that was shown, and some that, that got ribbons as well, but for Hope especially, uh, and for the talent she shares with other people in, in doing that, we say thanks be to God. And for Stephen and the others in the band, and there's lots of others in the band, uh, that went and practiced, and I can hear them practicing at my house because it reflects, it's kind of funny because I hear the drums and then I hear the reflection of the good music <laughs> off, of the, <laughs> off of the Baptist uh, gym because it's a big metal reflector comes back at me and uh, I can hear them playing and, and just want to go and look all the time. But for all of their efforts, uh, most of you may not know this, but the band starts in August when the football starts, and they work, and they work, and they work, and it is a, a, an act of real dedication. And so we celebrate uh, their achievement of first divisions, and we say, praise be to God. Praise yes, ma'am? I can't quite hear. Say again. For, for, for grandmother's butt to get better because it's been hurting her, and we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Good. Uh, a good report on Ann Carpenter. Uh, she sends you her greetings and thanks for your prayers. Uh, and also prayers for uh, Pat Sanchez as uh, she went home not feeling well. And we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. And then an unspoken prayer for an unnamed prayer for a, a person who's going through surgery on Wednesday. And we say together, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Are there others? weekends with Jesus is always good, but not only for the pilgrims or the, the people that are going for their first time, but also the people that are working the walk this week. For all those who are working the walk to Emmaus this coming weekend and all those who are pilgrims uh, experiencing the walk, uh, we pray together saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. At the early, yes, sir. For the men and women who serve in the armed forces and those who uh, respond uh, to crisis and disasters, we say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our 
At the early service, uh, Martha Bell was added to our prayer list, and we, we say together, Lord, hear our prayer. Yes, sir. Julie Bernard, Judy. We lift her up together saying, Lord, hear our prayer. There was a celebration of the kindness of strangers at the early service. Uh, someone experienced a blowout and had grandchildren in the car. And uh, someone just came along and helped them out and took care of them and sent them on their way home. And for that kindness of strangers and act of faith, we say, praise be to God. The flowers on the altar today are celebrating the fifth anniversary of Dan and Patty Sword, and we celebrate with them saying, praise be to God. Praise yes? I can't hear. John, what'd she say? I, I know there are packages back there, but she's not, she's not amplified. An aunt, your aunt is getting married this weekend. Very good. Is that, is that right? Because that's what he heard. That is right. Okay. For an aunt who's getting married this weekend, uh, we celebrate with them and pray for them, saying together, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Any other? For Abigail uh, from Freeport, who many people are already praying for, we lift her up and say together, Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. If you would look, we put the last four weeks of prayer concerns on the back of your bulletin. Um, and on only a month ago, there was a tropical storm that flooded out lots of places and lots of people. And we're back to our normal lives, aren't we? Thanks be to God, we are back to our normal lives, but there are people who are still uh, taking things out and looking through them and trying to recover from that flood. And so we continue to pray for those who are in recovery and those who are working with them and trying to put things back to a new normal. And we say together, Lord, hear our prayers. We turn our hearts and minds towards God as we lift up these concerns and many others to God in prayer. Hear us as we pray, O oh God. We need you to act in the lives of our friends and family. We need you to be a part of the world that you have created. We need you to do for us those things that we cannot do for ourselves. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Let your peace reign in our hearts. Allow your peace to overflow from us that we might encounter other people in love and with patience so that your peace might multiply itself. Hear our prayers, O God. Respond to us. Help us to be the people that you need us to be. Hear our prayers, O God. We pray for those we love. We pray for those we know. We pray for those we cannot name. We pray for those around the world whom we depend upon, and yet we don't think about. Hear our prayers, O oh God. The world needs you to be present. The world needs you to make your presence known. Hear our prayers, O oh God, and use us 
as your witnesses. Help us to be faithful. Help us to share your love with others. For it's in the name of Christ that we pray to you, that we call upon you, that we use the words that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's sermon text comes from Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. It's located on page 18 of the New Testament of your pew Bible. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who, followed, who neither feared nor had respect for the people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a little while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I fear not God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes... Will he find faith on earth? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Prayer is the foundation of all discipleship. 
It is the, the thing that disciples do in preparation for action. It is the thing that disciples do after the action has been taken to give thanks to God. It is the way that we communicate with our God. It is the way that we lay bare our hearts in confession. It is the way that we plead with God to act in our lives. Prayer is foundational to all that we do as disciples. And Jesus teaches us about prayer in a very interesting way. As the writer of Luke relates this story, he is probably doing so to a group of people who are not really, well, they're wondering when Jesus is supposed to come back. You see, Jesus lived and taught, was crucified and died and went to the grave and was resurrected and then ascended into heaven and he said, I'll be right back. And they thought that meant today, this afternoon, maybe tomorrow at the latest. And so they continued in his practices of prayer and thanksgiving and worship. But it's been some time. We don't know how long. But it's been some time. And they begin to write the stories of what Jesus taught and how Jesus taught them. And Luke relates this story to us about this teaching on prayer. Luke relates this story about how a widow was determined to get justice for her cause. And she was pleading with a judge who didn't really pay attention to her and didn't want to pay attention to her. But because she pled her case day after day after day and bugged him into action, this judge, who was no respecter of God or people, granted her request just to get rid of her. And then Jesus says, won't your God who loves you do so much more if you pray? God's not going to treat you that way. Is God is going to respond to your prayers and God will act on your prayers. You see, he uses the, the image of this judge who doesn't want to act, being forced into it, and yet he is telling us about a God who wants to act and doesn't have to be forced. He says we can make each other take action if we're just persistent. If you can be persistent in your prayer, then think of how much God wants to offer you and how quickly God will act. The interesting thing also that God, uh, Jesus in this, this lesson links prayer and justice together for us. This unjust judge, this man who simply... Uh, takes the case when he wants to and doesn't take a case if he doesn't want to, obviously. He acts and he gives her justice for her cause. He does not simply dismiss her. He doesn't have her placed outside of his realm. He doesn't uh, push her away. He gives her justice. And those who seek justice in the kingdom of God receive justice. You see, Jesus links these two together for us. Because very often what we're praying about is things that we see in the world that are unjust. That are not right. That need to have God's intervention in order to bring about justice. And that's a, a thing that happens to us on a personal level. It's a thing that happens to us on a, a communal level. It's a thing that we deal with as disciples because we are people who seek the truth and we seek to do the justice that God calls us to do. Sometimes we are as unwilling as that judge to act when God is gnawing at us to act. If I had a dollar for every time I said, God, that's not my fight, that's not my problem, those are not my people, I'm staying out of this, I'd probably have three or four dollars. Because I usually get into it. That's just the way I am. But you know that there are times when the Holy Spirit is pushing you to say something 
is pushing you to take action, is pushing you to do something on behalf of another person. I can remember as a youth in junior high being pushed by the Holy Spirit into the way of someone who was bigger than me because they were picking on someone who was smaller than me. I wish it was always that simple. I wish it was always that easy that God would pick the easy fights for me to get into and lose. But we act on behalf of God in the world. We bring to God those things that are not right in the world. We call on God to bring justice to the world. It happens to us on a personal level. It happens to us on that place where we look at the test results of a loved one and we say, why can't we be unique in a different way? Why do I have to have this disease that no one else has? How did I manage to win the DNA lottery when I can't win the other one? You know what I mean? That's my family. All of our luck is bad luck. But we bring that to God when we bring that person to God in prayer and we say, this isn't fair to my family, dear God. Act. Bring about healing. Bring about wholeness. Send us a doctor who has a new idea. We plead and we call upon God and we urge God to bring justice to that situation, even of health. Because it just doesn't seem fair that our loved ones are suffering when other people and we ourselves are healthy. You see, even prayers about health and action are prayers that call upon God to bring justice and reconciliation and wholeness to the situation. They are prayers that call upon God to act. There are prayers where we look at the world and we just say, you know, it's just not right. We look at situations. Someone's at home in Fort Worth, Texas, they leave the door open because it's a cool night to get some air in the house, playing a video game with their family member, and they end up getting shot by a neighbor who's concerned about their safety, calling the police. It's not right. And we need to plead with God to bring justice to situations like that. We need to plead to God to bring wholeness to situations like that. To not just let those kinds of things go. But to pray, dear God, please don't let that happen again. Dear God, please bring justice to that family so that, so that they feel safe in their homes, in that community. Don't let that just go. We pray for God's justice when we see wrong being committed. Wherever that wrong is. However it manifests itself. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? That's one of our baptism vows. We used it just a couple of weeks ago as we baptized Luke. We used it uh, months ago as we baptized others. We all say yes. And how do we resist that? Sometimes we are the person in the place where we step forward and we say that is not allowed here. And most of the time we're in a place where we have to bring it to God and say God we need you to act because evidently we cannot treat each other with the love that they, we deserve. Jesus links the seeking of justice by this woman with her prayer life. And the judge acts. Jesus asks us some questions, though, doesn't he? After he gets through with that parable teaching of a widow and an unjust judge, 
He says, will not God act when you call upon God to act? The answer is yes. Time and time again in the Old Testament and the New Testament, God acts when people ask God to be an actor in their lives. When God is asked to be a part of their lives, God takes action. Jesus asks, will God delay? Will he put us off? No, God will not delay. But God will not be instant either. You know, we live in a world where we think that as soon as we think something, it should happen. And as soon as we say something, it should be put into play. And as soon as we click order this now, I should be able to walk to the door and the Amazon guy should be there, right? Really and truly, that's almost the way it is, and we are deceived into thinking that that is the time schedule that things work on. God will not be delayed, but God will not be rushed. God will bring about justice on God's schedule in God's time. God will bring about wholeness on God's schedule in God's time. You know, this is something that is also whatever we bring to God in prayer God acts on. If it's a broken relationship between you and a brother or sister, whether that's a biological brother or sister or a community brother or sister, God acts to bring about wholeness and justice in that relationship. And it may not happen immediately when we bring it up, and it may not happen the first conversation that we have with that other person, and it may not happen with the first time we sit down at Thanksgiving with that other person, but it will happen because we have called upon God to act in that relationship and to bring it back into wholeness. Finally, Jesus asked this last question. After teaching them on prayer, after reminding them of what they need to be doing, after helping them understand that there's a link between what we ask God and how God responds, he says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Wow. Will he find faith on the earth? Will there be people who are praying? Will there be people who are pleading? Will there be people who are engaged and are ready to be found? And that's the question each of us have to answer individually. Because the faithful will be found by Christ when Christ returns. Whether it's today or tomorrow or a thousand years from now, Christ will come for the faithful. He will come for those who are seeking, who are praying, who are pleading, not only on their behalf, but on behalf of their world and on behalf of those around them. May we be a people who are people of faith, who lift up those situations of injustice around us in prayer, who confront those situations of injustice around us with our actions, and who call upon God to guide us and to act for us to bring about wholeness and healing and justice in God's world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to pause in worship just now to take care of something that is equally an act of worship and equally uh, a part of who we are as, as a people of God. Um, if the ushers would pass out the uh, nominations committee report, and if you'll give those to the choir. For a month, the members of the lay leadership committee have looked at the needs for the committees and the lay leadership of the church. Uh, we have called on some of you, and you have said yes. We've called on others of you, and you have said not right now, and we thank you all for your consideration. Uh, and what's being passed out is a list of the committees and those folks who have uh, agreed to serve on those committees. And if you'll get one to everybody. 
We're going to give you just a minute to think about that, and we're going to pray over it. And then we are going to prayerfully uh, affirm that if it is your will. You know that the church is an all-volunteer organization. We do have some paid employees, but you know what they make, and it's really kind of volunteer in that situation too. But they are dedicated to what they do, and they, they do a great job of it. We have very dedicated volunteers who volunteer to serve on trustees, which handles building and maintenance. Uh, the nominations committee, which is lay leadership, that handles... Uh, the finding of people to be on committees, basically. There is a finance committee that handles putting the budget together and overseeing the spending of the church. There is an endowment committee that helps recruit monies for endowment. There's a staff parish relations committee which helps to, uh, with the staffing and is kind of my sounding board and oversight committee. Uh, there's a memorials committee that deals with uh, memorial gifts that are given to the church. And there's a... a uh, Welcoming Ministries Committee, which is the folks who co coordinate the ushers and help us to do some things to welcome folks into the church. And then there's a Memorials Committee, which helps to decide decisions about memorial gifts and things like that. Each one of those has a, a role to play. And you staff all of those, and they're very important uh, <coughs> actions and, and things to do. Take just a moment. Has anybody found their name where it's not supposed to be? Good. That's always a tense moment. It does come to you from the nominating committee or the lay leadership committee as we call it now. And as such, it simply requires someone to second it if you are willing to adopt this slate of officers for the coming year. And anyone present can do that. I second it. I have a second second and a first second. Very good. Is there any discussion or any thoughts about that? And if you will adopt these persons, well, let me say first, if you will pray for these persons and their jobs that they will be called on to do in the next year, and if you will adopt them as your leaders uh, in the various committees that they are uh, assigned to, then signify by saying aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Hearing none, they are elected and they will serve. Uh, from January 1st until the last day of the year number above their name. So if, if the year number is 2020, they'll serve from January 1st, 2020 till the end of 2020. If the year number is 2023, which I don't think is on there, uh, they would serve to the last day of 2023. All right. Then we thank you for your time and your indulgence in that. Um, Charge Conference is usually where we do this kind of thing. This year, Charge Conference will take place on the 17th of November. It will be a worship uh, service. And at that worship service, there will be probably six other churches present. And so each of them are doing this separately, and then we'll come together uh, to celebrate all of this together in worship on the 17th. Now back to our closing of worship. If you will stand... If you would like to make a public profession of your faith, we invite you to do so. If you'd like to make this your church home, we certainly welcome you. And we would like to uh, have you do that as we sing this closing hymn. But you can do that in many other ways as well. So if we'll sing our closing hymn, O oh Master, let me walk with thee uh, as, we, as we close our service today.
You are the church of Jesus Christ. You are God's people at work in this world. Go and be a part of the world, but go and work to bring about God's kingdom in the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.